Michael So. I work as a, a manager of laboratory informatics at the Inova Translational Medicine Institute. Uh, basically, if, when you go to a hospital, you have various departments. You have things like cardiology, which is a heart, and you have pulmonology and things like that. Uh, we are the genomics. So we do anything that has to do with genetic disorders and things like that. We are primarily a research arm, but we're growing in a clinical area, which is more in terms of actual patient care. Research is more about making discoveries and things like that. I'm more, I work more on that side. Uh, as I mentioned before, I have uh, two openings right now. We're looking primarily for SQL developers, as well as a lasting administrator. So if you're interested, uh, come talk to me, business, I'll give you a business card, and uh, go along the way. So let me tell you a little, about, a little bit about what our laboratory does. Uh, we have a number of different studies uh, that range from anywhere from you know very small uh, premature babies to uh, kids who have who are completely healthy and we're just tracking over the course of their young adult life or uh, young child life. Uh, so we typically go to about age ten, uh, age five. We're hoping to have a grant to go to age ten, and this is just longitudinally tracking their changes of you know, uh, what uh, disease that might have, and see if we can make predictions using their DNA, uh, and see if, we, if there's things that we can do early on to try to prevent those kinds of things. We're gonna be talking about a study that has to do with the microbiome, which means the bacteria in your gut. How many of you guys knew that you guys had bacteria in your gut? I would imagine a good of you. There was a study that was done uh, not too long ago that actually just proved a lot of people thought that your gut, when you were born, when you were actually sterile, and, it, and they're not. You actually have some bacteria in your gut, and uh, some of our studies has been trying to figure out where that comes from, how that helps you to digest food, how that makes you a little bit more resistant to certain types of bacteria and others. This particular study is for premature babies who obviously have a lower immune system and trying to figure out what we can do to um, strengthen their immune system. And the laboratory had a particular problem. This was how the laboratory needed to solve the communication, what's going on, what do I need to do, problem. I assume that I am the only one that's had this problem. No? Uh, yes, I am? Okay. <laughs> you know, so this will be new student. All right, so we're gonna talk about, I gotta turn this on. So we're gonna talk about how the laboratory took their very large backlog and sprinted through it. What they used to do was they had a bunch of cells that were in a uh, that were in an incubator that were growing and all they had was paper and they didn't know what stage it was on and whether it was ready to be split and whether it needed to be you know, moved into other places. So they needed a centralized location where there was good data, they knew what their task was and they could just go through it. So they had a quote backlog of 100 stories which were extraction runs. So if you imagine, you have a whole bunch of bacteria, we just need to run through it, and uh, they need to do extractions and things like that. Um, and so they, there was about 100 of them. And each uh, extraction run typically had about a dozen or so bacteria that they were growing. Each run took one week, but you can do as many, in, uh, as many of these in parallel, typically about five. Uh, it was very repeatable work, so we did a lot of cloning of tickets, and I'll get into that in a bit. But they needed a way to run down the backlog. The backlog wasn't changing. We had a set of data, we had a set of bacteria that just needed to be worked on. Also we needed to track the individual tasks associated with run. Everything, everything to do with reagents and buffers and all the chemistry stuff that I don't even know. Uh, but they, that's important for them to track uh, from a regulatory standpoint. And all of this was done under five separate protocols. They all had different tiny steps that made it slightly unusual, but a lot of them had the similar stuff. You still had to put them into a petri dish. You still had to put them under a microscope to make sure how, uh, how full they were and things like that. This up here, anyone want to guess what that is? I, I have been told this is not a zombie virus. I have been told it's not a zombie virus. This is the HPV, human papilloma virus. It is considered 90% 90 uh, 90 uh, comfort, I think, I think is the word. 90 which means that uh, the, back, uh, the virus is 90% of, uh, of the fluid that's there. Uh, what we do with that is uh, we run various standards against this particular uh, virus uh, to see how other uh, viruses uh, react to different reagents alongside that. 
And we have here more viruses and bacteria that come back being put us out, so I don't know what they are. The tint of red that you see there is uh, some sort of bovine serum. So that's how the cell will grow. If you have any questions, please feel free to raise your hand. I can't promise you I can answer the science questions, but that would be my best. Uh, so what the lab ended up doing was developing a scrum plan. So they heard about us doing sprints and heard, hey, can we do something like that in the laboratory? I said, yeah, this is just a framework. There's not, there's nothing IT about Apple Storm. It's just a process in which we deliver a result. And so we're like, okay, well, let's try that. Let's start with a one-week sprint because it took approximately one week to do uh, one particular run. So they did five uh, interactions per run. So what they did was they informed stakeholders that JIRA was going to be that single source of truth. This is how they're going to start tracking their work. They're no longer going to do Excel sheets on paper, post-it notes on the lab wall that of course fall down, but we're going to use JIRA to use the schedule. And here's the real benefit that they got out of JIRA. Since they had a known backlog, they built their entire backlog and all the history that they needed to. Now, a, a particular uh, principal investigator can go into JIRA and say, you know what? This particular cell line, I want that done now because I read this paper that said that this could be able to cure some sort of disease. So let's concentrate on that. And all they had to do was go into JIRA and just move that ticket up. Makes it super easy so that in the next sprint, they just bring those in. Stakeholders can adjust the run. So if within the sprint, and it hasn't started yet, of course, um, they can mix things up and, and say, okay, I'm ready to kind of make some changes here, or I don't want this one done yet. So it allowed them to have a lot of flexibility. If problems arise, they discuss after the sprint. Again, this is retrospective. What went well? What didn't go well? What could we have done better? Are there things that we need to change about our process? So all that oftentimes that was done with a very short conversation. So Jira to the rescue. So Jira, we use actually Jira software. Uh, I don't know if this is still true today, but the uh, Jira software is the only one that actually can do sprints. Is that, is that still true? Because I, I remember hearing that Core was thinking about I don't know. Anyway, um, we never looked into the Kanban backlog. Uh, they looked into it, but they wanted something that was structured, which is why they stuck with the sprint. Was so built out within that one ticket all the steps that they heard about. So whether it was incubated, whether which, uh, which reagent they ended up using, how much of that reagent, where they put the sample, things like that. Things that otherwise you would have to do over email. What if someone was on vacation? Where was all that information? Now there was one spot to have it all. And then all they did after that was they just duplicated the ticket over and over again. The only side effect they got from this was that a lot of tickets said clone, 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 picture. And so, <laughs> we were not able to find a quick way to fix that, and so they just dealt with it. So you can see here in our uh, screenshot that uh, this is uh, sprint number nine, which uh, this is the last sprint they ended up working on. You can see that they're uh, currently in progress, I think. And then uh, here in, um, in the actual sprint, or the agile, uh, the agile uh, comma board, that uh, they can just move the task from to do in progress in them. So what was the result of this? Better communication, of course. And that's what JIRA is really good for, is that if you want to have all that information in one spot, so you don't have to think about it, you can say a single switch of truth, JIRA is there. And everyone got really good at communicating that, because everyone realized that if there was better communication on the, on the ticket, everybody was happy. <coughs> um, the higher ups could also see the details uh, but they can also observe the overall process. And this is where things really work for them. Like I said, they have five, they have five different studies, which essentially means five different bosses, five different people telling you one thing over and over. They said, look, we just want to do the lab work. You guys figure out amongst yourselves how you want this done. Once you set that in the backlog, we will just take the next five and go from there. So the investigators can change their mind whenever they want it. I'm sure that this is a surprise to some of you. Requirements change from time to time, even in the laboratory. And they needed a quick way to be able to solve that, giving the PIs the ability to go in here and mess things around and change the sprint uh, or change our future sprints was really beneficial to them. Non-project managers could actually manage the project. There was nothing special about here. These, this was a tool that all of them had used at one point or another during their career at ITMI. 
And all they had to do was just be more familiar with the particular workflow they were in. And it was just a simple to do in progress and done. The micromanagement was left to the microorganisms. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so let me give you, give, you, give you guys some actual quotes from the library, uh, from the laboratory. Much easier to do than ticketing. So we have a really hard way of doing ticketing, something that we, have, we in our IT department have been trying to fix. Uh, but they found that this was a lot easier, even though we told them that basically the same thing. But for them, it was easier. We were happy for the win. Uh, email is a bad way to communicate. Commenting in Jira was just the correct thing to do. I and mean, it, was, it was good to hear that from our end user. The end user saying that all of our information now just needs to be in Jira. And finally, this was uh, Nicole, which is uh, a friend of Aaron's. Without Scrum, it would have been a cluster friend. I'll let you figure out the word there. And so, you know, at the end of the day, what they really enjoyed was that they could use an agile process, which, you know, we just simply gave them the framework and figured out that they can do their lab work this way. The lab is currently undergoing an overall <coughs> process to now agile scrum a lot of their other activities. To the point where we, are, we have started to work with that to help, uh, to help create the Jira projects and all of the ticket issue types and things like that, and just helping them get their work off the ground and help them work smarter and not harder. And at this time, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you guys might have about Jira or about the Agile Spring process or about what we do. Yes? Can you focus on the 15 using Jira reports? So the majority of the reports that they used was just the uh, regular uh, like sprint, um, run, uh, like burnout charts and things like that. That's the majority of the reports. They didn't do anything else. Did you set up any custom fields or anything that you wouldn't think about for the whole organization or just the team? Or? Great question. We have a huge problem with custom fields. And a lot of the fields that they ended up using were already fields that were in there. We made it a point to make sure that they did not we did not have to create anything new for them. We tried to make them re reuse it as much as possible. And another one, uh, another one of the things that we uh, taught them, but I don't think they ended up using it, was a template, like a, like a template that they can copy and paste over and over. And since this was a known backlog, that actually worked really well. Or that would have worked well, but they decided to do that. Great question. Did you have your plan figured out all at the beginning, or did you have to adjust? That's a great question. So are you talking about the lab, or are you talking about the Jira project? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so for the Jira project, we actually went through, I think, three total iterations. So we set up, uh, they needed to go live, I think, within two weeks. And so we built a, store, uh, a very uh, similar structure to how we have it. We had an epic story and a task and stuff like that. So we set that up for them, which worked for the majority of what they needed. They needed some custom fields here and there and a, an approval workflow added. And so that we did over to other uh, but for the lab, uh, they it took them, they started out with a one-week sprint, and then they changed to a two-week sprint. If I'm being perfectly honest with you, I didn't understand why they did that. I think it was just an ease and not feeling rough, if I had to guess. But, um, but yeah, that's the, other, that's the other change that they made. But overall, I mean, this was a huge win for them. Good question. Yes? Sorry? The duplicate text. Um, they did it by they had they changed the run uh, name uh, number. So you can see here this says in case you can't see it, it says all run underscore one, and then they just any time every time they duplicated it, they would just change that last number, and that's how they knew which run that was. But all the subtasks were still the same. It was still things like um, uh, replicate cells and add reagent. But does that answer your question? I'm not sure if I'm if I'm understanding your question correctly. Can you say that one more time? I mean, I think that if you did one change request and one sprint, I think that would just be one sprint. Then maybe in sprint 
Okay, so if I'm understanding your question is how did the lab differentiate between uh, a task that was done in sprint one to sprint at sprint three? Yeah. Okay, so um, in Jira, uh, this the this top level here is the story level, and this connects to all of the tasks that are underneath it. So even though the subtasks were named exactly the same, uh, they knew that it was part of that master story ticket because of how it rolled up in Jira. Does that make sense? So, uh, for example, sample prep, you can see extraction and cleanup is done for, uh, I think I scrolled down, there's, a, there's a, um, a ticket up here. And then you can see extraction and cleanup here, and then sample prep is down here. They just do that because they all rolled up to the story. That's a great question, though. That's a great question. <coughs> Do we use any automation in your projects? And did, did, for this specifically or any other projects in Jira? Do we use any automation? No, we do not. We want to. Um, for example, one of the things that we've been wanting to do for a long time is have our GitHub be able to call back in to be able to create an instance or something like that. Um, but due to various firewall restrictions at a hospital level, it has been very much frowned upon. Mm -hmm. We've been trying to figure out ways around that. Did you guys switch to local hosting? Uh, we are at AWS. We're self-hosted at AWS. And so the AWS world and the political, and, and our hospital world has different rules. Officially, they're not allowed to communicate. Yeah. Officially. Mm -hmm. We're being reported, so <laughs> I'm going to stick to that line. That's a great question. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah. Um, who can produce that uh, technology to the team? Uh, I think that the team members were not aware about Jira, maybe because they are scientists. Were they aware about, like, yes. the of technologies? Is it, or was it a consensus because of, uh, like, within the team? Oh, let's use this technology. Uh, so that's a, yeah, that's a great question. So, the scientists, the entire department overall is familiar with Jira just because. It is the ticketing system. Uh, our organization has a tremendous benefit from Inova, I'm sorry, from Atlassian. The fact that we're a nonprofit, we actually get Jira, Confluence, and all that stuff for free, uh, which is a great benefit for us. And we do everything we can to pay that back with uh, talks like this. And so we're not here to, uh, we're not here to uh, get money from you. We're actually here to pay back. And so, um, so yeah, we're um, the. Uh, the great thing about the, that Jira adoption is because it's free and because it's world-class software, uh, a lot of the scientists know that this is how we get our work done. So if they want, let's say, a new keyboard, they know they have to log into Jira and submit a Jira ticket so that, that that's crap. And so they're familiar with the mechanics of it. Does, does, does that answer your question? Um, partly, because uh, so I was under impression that Jira is like for IT guys, like for programmers, for like uh, managers. Common misconception, yeah. And uh, so I, I see now Jira is much wider now. Maybe, yes. maybe, maybe I'm out of date. So maybe <laughs> like five years ago, like this. No, 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 yeah. I think um, I would agree with you that I think when I first learned about Jira, I saw it as an IT tool. Uh, but you know, when you go down deep into the bones of it, it's it's a project management tool. At the very basic level, it's a yeah. project management tool. How, how wide? Uh, how wide? How often it's used out of like IT uh, development? Uh, That's a good question. What statistics about? I don't know. I know at, at last year's summit they talked about how the business class software, the uh, Jira business, or I'm sorry, Jira Core, was being utilized more and more by like HR teams and things like that. And so it seems to be having some wide adoption in that area. So again, I'm not an Alaskan uh, expert, but my if, if I have to guess, I mean, the, a lot of the workflows, and the, the hard thing about the um, Jira and Trello, if you're, how many people here use Trello? So if you're asking. Okay. Yeah, the way that they can do that. Jira requires a little bit of setup. It requires a little bit of know-how to get it up and running. But once you do, it becomes incredibly powerful. And so I tell people, if you're not used to Jira, maybe start out at Trello and then jump up into, into Jira. And so when we bring new people on, one of the things that we really try to do is we do things like this, Atlassian user groups at Anova. And so we have it completely internal. We have swag just like you guys do. 
and, uh, and then just show them, hey, here's how you use Jira. And we try to raise adoption at that, that respect. By the way, by the way, it's not only Jira itself. Uh, it's a unique uh, like, feature to use. But the new people uh, set like agile, scrum uh, approaches. Do you need to teach them how to, how to, how to do Yes, that? Uh, a lot of the lab though doesn't, uh, so they're trying to move a lot of their processes to Agile, but the, t the way that the tickets run in their particular project is not really, uh, they use more like a Kanban process where they see all their tasks and they move it left to right. Good question, sir. Good question. Yeah. I think you mentioned that um, there's this non project yeah. So this sprint, um, do you have like a lead that kind of you know, managing uh, the stories and making sure they get updated? Or do you have uh, daily scrums to review them? Or um, yeah, so if you're asking if they have an actual scrub master, yeah. they do not. Yeah. Once we built this for them, we let them run with it. They didn't, they didn't need us. They, this was 100% user managed. And so uh, once we show them, uh, what we, our big, our big um, trumpet is we teach you how to fish. We don't give you fish, we teach you how to fish. So once we taught them how to do this, they ran with it and they loved it. And for, uh, for, things, like, uh, for things like moving the, the tickets around, they didn't know that you could do that. And once we showed them that, their, their productivity improved because they felt like they had, to, they had to find the ticket, they had to search for it. When really all they needed to do was just go to boards, go to their uh, go to their microbiome board, and then this would just show up automatically. They update on their own. Then. They do, yeah, because they knew how important it was. Yeah. Great question. Great question. Yeah. <laughs> Not saying that project managers aren't important. They, like, they, you know, you have to love them. Yeah. Not saying that project managers aren't important. Uh, but these are these are lab these are scientists. These are laboratory people that. You know, for them, uh, what they cared about was, you know, making sure that the cells grew up and they did all the right things from a regulatory perspective. This was just the hammer to get them there. That was it. They didn't want to know, like, the inner workings of, you know, what's the difference between an epic and a story? I mean, we told them that, but at the end of the day, all, they, all, the, all that mattered to them was how did, how did they get their work done. And at the end of the day, that's what every Jira administrator wants, is that they want to get the work done. And anything that a Jira administrator can do to enable that, that's a win. Great question. Yes? Um, they use only Jira or um, they use Confluence with it? Like a mode of like, management or something like that? So that's a great question. So for this particular project, all of the work is tracked in Jira. All of the regulatory, like, how do you do this? What's the SOP? You know, and all that stuff. All that's managed in Confluence. Yeah. Great question. Great question. Do you have any analysis? This is a hard question to answer because because we get Elastian for free, we also get the plugins for free. So we have you got We did, we do. And the difficult part, the difficult job that we have is that it's like we go to a buffet. We have mm -hmm. we overeat. So our our um, our instance is quite large. It's a M4 extra large at this point, mm -hmm. and we're using four. Uh, we had to raise the memory on the virtual machine to about four gigs at this point. And so we're like, we, we, this is not sustainable. Just because it's free doesn't mean that we should keep eating. Right. And, um, and so one of, the, one of the things that we're trying to do is I try not to identify the plugins that aren't being used anymore and try to not renew them and see if they make complaints. And so if they do, then we know that this is still needed. But what, what we're trying to gauge is making sure that, um, you know, if we're just, we're trying to be good citizens, essentially, is that, and we're not trying to over but overall, yes, we do have a lot of plugins, more than uh, you have this workflow or something. I don't know. I mean, it's a good basic one that a lot of people have, so. Yeah, it's, it's quite possible. Yeah. Are you getting free AWS also? No, no. <laughs> um, although I will admit, I will admit that AWS has given us a very large grant, not to do this, but to do other things with our microbiome and things like that. Machine learning, AI, all that other kind of stuff. Can I ask you what your bill looks like? Are you going to be asking at the end of the I'm more than happy to answer that question. It's our, believe it or not, most of our problems are in storage. So uh, average DNA uh, sequence. 
from Billy, you, or anyone else. 90 gigs for press per person. We have about 2,000 families. That's at least two people, mom and baby, usually dad included. We're in pediments. That's what? So, compete, drop the bucket. Atlassian, like, environment. Is that, is that the one where it's an extra large? Yes, the, the, our um, JIRA and Confluence are in the actual Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. And yeah. we're dedicated yeah. to We're dedicated to it. So yeah. that's the, and uh, that's only because when we first initially put this on, dedicated, uh, uh, PHI was only supported on dedicated. Now it's not. And so uh, there's some incentive for us to move off of dedicated. Uh, but we're not sure if we're, we might be, the, we, end up, we might end up being the, uh, the noise neighbor. And uh, so we're not sure yet. Good question. Yes. Uh, one question. So it's uh, this approach is used for like flat uh, team, uh, relatively not big team. But how about like a uh, wider, bigger organization, which are structured like uh, working on the same goal, but like having some departments? Is it possible somehow to use Jira to cover uh, entire uh, structure organization, or it's only like for like flat? Um, that sense? No, no, no. I, that makes sense. So if I'm understanding your question, is that can Jira be used in very large organizations? Yeah, like yeah. To, to reach like some, some goals, like not like uh, separate, uh, isolated yes. uh, pieces of management, but like entire stuff. Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, uh, the federal government, pockets of federal government, use Jira. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, I would say that the strat, what the strategy needs to be is. If you want, uh, if you want cohesive goals where everybody is shooting for the same thing, so you have Epics, right? There is apparently when you when you uh, install Jira project, there is something called strategic goal. Um, Jira portfolio. Yeah, yeah, Jira portfolio or initiative or something like that, which is one level higher than Epic. Yeah, so initiatives and things. Initiatives and things, and so then all your Epics then connect to a particular initiative or, or theme. And that's how you can move projects forward. It's a, and it's a you good do, it's like your road mapping, and you're setting like your goals or themes, and you can tie tickets back to it or epics back to it. Yeah. yeah. You can do that kind of stuff. I would say your your bigger problem is going to be culture, because I would say the way that Jira works best is if the teams are agile, and agile teams are going to be by definition smaller and flatter. And so at that point, you need to make sure that the, your organization has yeah, that, that structure in place. So you have scrum, and you have scrum of scrum, and then scrum of scrum of scrum, and you know, ad infinitum until you get to a point. Like everyone can see what I'm doing, and a lot of people don't like that. That, that too, you know, and, and that's something that we, that you know, that we fight. You know, the, the, you know uh, how visible do you want things to be? Uh, and so I'm, you know, I'm a big believer is that the most transparency that you have, the more visibility you have, the better it is for everybody involved. And so that that idea isn't shared by everybody. And so part of my job is to is to walk them through that, walk them through that idea. But it's hard sometimes with PHI to, to justify that sometimes. And so just walk them through that. But good question. Good question. Yeah. More than happy to talk to you and, and confluence and all that stuff afterwards. But thank you guys very much. Thank you. Uh, so just a quick thing. Um, this Jira project that we worked on actually resulted in papers. Uh, uh, obviously, you guys can't click this. Uh, but uh, I'll post these slides, and you guys are more than welcome to read them and, and find that information. You might be able to come and people sign things. Where will you post this? Uh, I'm going to post this. That's a good question. I'm really not sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Who here is not familiar with our Atlassian community? OK, fantastic. You got a few hands. So you can um, find me afterwards. I'll show you where you can sign up. And then you can, it's kind of like Reddit, you can post slides, yeah. and you can talk about them, their lives. So if you're like, hey, this event was cool, the food was great, now we have a forum for you to publicly say that. That way we can, at our level, communicate back to you, and it's not some secret message somewhere, right? Transparency. Yes. yes. So yeah. um, the NOVA Atlassian user group has a page dedicated to this. So feel free to check out that one. Um, I can show you here. And then we'll also, if we don't have one set up, Make sure that we have these slides, and then we'll go out yeah. and email. Hey guys, here's the link to both the community and the actual uh, article that this is mentioned. Very cool.
Uh, last but not least, uh, I promised Billy that I would show this QR code. So whip out your phones and scan this code. If you guys want to do the Elastic DevOps simulation, Billy can talk more about this. Uh, basically, it's a simulation run by Elastic at the museum.